Today I'm painting this dead core of Cree. How's it going everyone? My name is Alan, the Apathetic Fish, and today I'm showing you how I painted my Death Core of Krieg for Kill Team. These models are special in that they look and feel like historical models, and they look very nice even if you give them a very basic paint job. These dudes spend a lot of time on the trenches and they don't mind getting dirty. And to start painting I'm going to start with a model primed in black with a zenithal priming from the top with white ink through an airbrush. This is the ink I use. This method of priming is a good start for almost any paint job. It allows you to visualize volumes and light and it defines very clearly all of the details better than a solid color primer would. You can also use contrast paint to speed paint some areas, just paint them in any color you want and move on. Here I'm using my wet palette and I'm thinning this color down with a little bit of water so that it applies thinly, but I'm using Thousand Suns Blue and I intended to use Stegaden Scale Green. It's a little bit darker and it matches a little more closely to the box art that I was trying to copy. Here I'm applying this color thinly all over the model and if you apply it thinly you'll see that the zenithal primer shows underneath. This difference in values can inform us where to place our highlights and shadows afterwards but it's not going to be very necessary for this paint job right now. I'm going to apply a couple of coats of Stegadon Scale Green to the coat area and then move on. Next I'm using Thunderhawk Blue and I'm going to do the same, add it to my palette and thin it down a little bit to apply it to the pants. This is just a base coat for the pants and for the end of the sleeves where it folds. Apply a couple layers for better coverage. Next I'm using some Scale 75 Art Black and this is I'm going to just squeeze a little bit on the palette. You can use any black you like but uh, I like this one very much and a little bit goes a long way. I'm thinning it down and I'm going to apply it over all of the armor areas of the model as well as some areas of the gun that need to be black. Also you can paint all of the silver details as well if you want, although it's not necessary, but the silver will look a lot better if you do that. Once that's done I'm moving to use Mornfang Brown and with this color I'm going to use it in all of the leather areas. This goes over all of the straps and the backpack itself and any other area you would like to paint leather. Next I'm using Scale 75 Walnut but you can use Steel Legion Drav and I'm going to add this to my palette. This goes over the bedroll on top of the backpack and it also goes into the binding on the boots and any other area you see a similar color you can use this color. Next I'm using Ion Rack Skin for the mask of this model. For whatever reason it looks like a pale greenish bone color that I'm going to use on the face mask. Uh, this is different than all of the other tones. If you want to save on color, maybe you can use a little bit of white with the Steel Legion Drab and it'll look similar. I'm going to use this color to color in the mask and that's it. Next, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide and with this color, I'm going to color in the boots. This is very simple and very easy, just paint the boots. Uh, you can paint it the same color as the Mornfang Brown if you like. Uh, the box art shows them as a darker brown, so I use this instead. Next, I'm painting the iron metal parts with black metal from scale 75. 
I love this color. This is a darker shade, sort of like a lead belcher. And it looks very good and it covers very well. I'm going to very carefully paint all of the areas that I want to be silver with this paint. Just being very careful not to paint on the areas I already finished. Now the last color we need to finish up all of the base coat is going to be a gold and for that I'm going to use Viking Gold. You can use any other gold paint you want but I'm going to use this in just small details here and there. The Aquila symbol and any other details you might want to paint in a shiny gold color. Now to shade the entire model I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and this is going to tie all of the colors together and it's going to shade all of the recesses and it's not necessary to apply it over the black but I'm going to apply it over all of the other colors. Just grab a brush and undilute it. I'm going to apply it all over the model. Just make sure not to create any pools of wash over the model, especially on the under parts of the model. The wash tends to drip down and create pools. You don't want that, you just want it on the recesses. Just pay attention to that. If you have too much, you can absorb it with the brush. Now I have to mention that after I finished this step, I went back and fixed the Stegaton Scale Green. I painted it all over again with Stegaton Scale Green and added the wash on top. Once the wash dried, I'm going to go back with most of the colors and reapply them to create highlights. I'm going to start with the Stegaton Scale Green and color the coat. As you may be able to see, the coat looks a darker color than uh, how we had it before. That's because uh, this color worked better for my scheme and I'm going to use that instead. With thin down paint, I'm going to just pick the areas that are on top, then catch the light more easily and leave the recesses and the places facing down in the previous color. Next, I'm using Thousand Suns Blue and I'm going to create a color in between the Stegat and Scale Green and this color. And I'm going to use that to start highlighting all of the places where light hits on the coat. Here, uh, it's difficult to explain that I'm using a volumetric kind of highlight. I'm not going into painting all of the edges like the traditional way Games Workshop paints. I'm just going to gradually add paint to the places facing up. The Zenithal Priming gave me a good idea on where the highlight should be and I'm applying this color by heart or where I think the most, most of the light is catching on the model and leaving the deepest recesses on the previous color. Here I'm not being very strict, I'm just applying on all of the places facing up and one the ones that are facing a little bit to the side where they would have a little bit of color too. Next I'm going straight Thousand Suns Blue and with this color I'm going to start painting the coat again just in the areas more facing upwards than the other, leaving a little bit of all of the colors that I've used behind and this will create a transition of colors that will start looking pretty good. This is almost an edge highlight and uh, just a highlight on the places that most catches the light. Uh, but it's a very small highlight with a small brush. As you can see, I switched to a detail brush. And to finish up the coat, I'm going to use Ariman Blue. And with this color, I'm just going to apply just a tiny bit are the places that most reflect light. Just little touches here and there, it's nothing too fancy and this is going to accentuate those highlights and make them look even brighter.
Next I'm going to use Thunderhawk Blue and I'm going to do the exact same treatment to the pants that I did to the blue, but this time I'm going to use Start with Thunderhawk Blue. Apply this to all of the gray areas and all of the places facing the light and uh, just leave the deepest recesses and shadows in the original color. I'm going to continue highlighting with Fenrisian Grey and this color I'm going to find a color in between that and the Thunderhawk Blue and I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to use this color just to put it on the places where, the, where light hits on the grey and on the places to the sides before applying the last highlight. Our last highlight is pure Fendrician Grey and with this color I'm going to paint over all of the areas of the grey that are most reflective the light of our source which is our lamp on top of us and you can see on some of these places it's very easy to spot where the highest places or the most bright places are on the surface you can just paint those and you'll be good. Now I'm going to paint the browns and for that I'm going to start with Mornfang Brown and this on the boots is going to be just like a niche highlight on the most bright places. This doesn't matter if it looks a little bit chunky and for the brighter Mornfang Brown areas I'm going to apply this over most of the area just leaving the recesses on the previous color and this is going to start highlighting all of these areas. Now I'm using Scrag Brown and this is going to be the secondary highlight for all of these areas. I'm going to apply it just in the very sharpest or brightest areas of the boots. And this is going to go on all of the places facing up on the leather. It doesn't matter if they are edges or not, just all of the places that are facing up and all of the brightest places on the sides, just as like in the side of this belt. And that's it. And to finish all of the brown areas, I'm going to use some Baylor Brown and this is going to be just on the very top parts of the brown where it catches the most light. You can see all the reflections, you can just pick those and make them look very bright. This is going to make them look very good. Next I'm going to highlight all of the lighter brown with Steel Legion Drab and this is going to go over all of the surface just leaving the deepest recesses and shadows in the previous color. Next I'm using some Karak Stone and with this color I'm going to mix it up with Steel Legion Drab and find the color in between those and with this I'm going to start highlighting all of these lighter brown areas on the places where most of the light hits. And to finish these areas I'm going to use pure Karak Stone and I'm going to apply it on the most brightest places as an extreme highlight. Now I'm going to highlight the mask with Iron Rack Skin and this is going to go over just the mask and on the places where most light hits and this is going to be a very simple highlight just pick those areas and leave the shadows on the previous color. Now I'm going back to black and with this color I'm going to retouch all of the black areas of the models since the wash gave them a weird frosting 
and then make them look a little bit more matte. So I'm bringing back the black with just a small coat, a uh, very thin coat of black, just to make it look better. With the black colors, I don't like highlighting a bunch, so I'm going to use Eshin Gray. And with this, I'm going to add a very simple edge highlight on the brightest places. It's not going to be very noticeable, but it's going to give just an extra pop on those places where the most light reflects. Next, I'm going to highlight all of the silvers with heavy metal. This is scale 75 heavy metal. And I'm going to use this on the silvers, but paying close attention to where the most light reflects. Uh, whenever, wherever those spots are from your spotlight that you see, just highlight those, settle your model in one position and do that. And that's going to be very nice. It's gonna look very nice. And for the black armor, I'm going to just ding it a little bit with little dots of silver on places that where it might scratch and it doesn't matter you just have to do just a little bit and it's almost a dry brush and very little paint on the brush just do some scratches on those black armor plates you can leave it, them clean if you want to And for the gold, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but with elven gold. This is just going to go on the brightest spots of the gold areas, which are very few. But just a couple dots of this paint is going to make them look a lot brighter. And to finish the model, I'm going to use a little bit of Mephiston Red. And with this color, I'm just going to color in the lenses on the face. And that's going to be pretty much it. I could go into much more detail with painting this model. Uh, but I'm planning to paint all of the 10 of them. And I'm not planning to do that much more detail on this model. They look great as they, as they look. As I said, this mini was very fun to paint, more so because if you're not so clean with your application of paint, it still looks really nice because it adds to the character of a model that spends most of its time in the trenches fighting bad guys. I'm also halfway through my kill team of Death Corps of Kree and it has been a joy to paint so far. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for watching this video and if you enjoyed watching please give me a like and subscribe you can leave comments and questions below and you can follow my links in the description as well thank you so much for watching and supporting what i do and i hope to see you in the next video